Hi friends, I just got back from the Burley Park Flea Market in Michigan and I found a bunch of great stuff. I even found an entire box of a vintage something or other that I'm not gonna give away yet. I'm gonna show it at the end, but first I want to take you with me to the flea market. This flea market is a little different from ones that I've shown in the past. This one is pretty dirty and gross, but you can get really good deals here. So I'm excited to show you what it's like, so let's go. Burley Park Flea Market is in Howard City, Michigan. I have all the details on the times, the show dates, the location, and more on my blog post, so I will link that below. I get here right at 8 a.m., and there's always a line to get in, but it doesn't take very long. The line moves pretty fast. It costs $4 to get in. This flea market is a total mismatch of new, used, and vintage items. You'll find everything here from fruit to flowers. Uh, you'll find bongs, but ugly new stuff. There's everything. This isn't a clean, aesthetically pleasing flea market like the Allegan flea market, which I've shown in the past, and I'll link one of those videos. This one is really dusty and really dirty, but to me, that means you get really good deals. The items are quite cheap. You really have to dig at this market, though. There are some sellers that are expensive, and I avoid those booths like the sellers that sell really pricey Pyrex, though they are pretty to look at. I search for the booths that look like they unloaded stuff from a dusty barn, and they're just selling them now. In the past, I've bought from people just like that. I saw a Santa Blow mold that I wanted really bad. I asked him how much it was. He said, I just found that in the back of a barn. You can have it for five bucks, which was unbelievable. And this time I ended up buying stuff from a booth that was a family selling their parents' estate. They just loaded up the car and started selling their parents' stuff. And I found some really good items there. All right, let's take a look at the rest of the flea market. what I bought. So first up is this blue mid-century modern kitchen tin. I can never have enough tins. I paid five dollars for it. Next up are these super cool cameras. They were five dollars a piece and I don't decorate with a lot of black most of the time but Halloween is when I let loose and really let myself embrace darkness and blackness. So I'm definitely going to decorate with these for Halloween. I love the designs on them. And I did look up one of the companies, the Spartus, the ones that are made in Chicago. And it looks like this was made from the 1940s. There's one booth that I bought quite a bit at. So they had a dollar table. There's lots of dollar tables at the Burley Park Flea Market, which I love. I cannot get enough of dollar booths. First thing I bought were these really cool airmail envelopes. I always see these in the movies, like World War II movies. And I just think that they're so cool. And even the stamps on here are cool. Like this one has a stamp from Hong Kong. It's just fun thinking about the person that was writing these. Like this one was for Kenneth in Flint, Michigan. I really, really enjoy this type of thing. And I like to craft with these type of items and make my own artwork with them. I also plan on making artwork with these seals. I really like the color. They're Easter seals. And the cute little kids on them are adorable. Uh, it actually says that if you buy these seals, you're donating to help crippled kids, which we would never ever say that type of thing in 2022, but I just think they're really cute. Then I got some dollar die cuts. I got this snowman one, and then I got three dancing Santas. Also at this booth, I got these cheeky glasses. On the bottom, it says that they are made with genuine walnut, and I like the sherbety colors. And then I got these kitschy snails. They're $5 and they're salt and pepper shakers and they're UNESCO. So I'm sure they're collectible. I'm gonna have to look them up. I love their little antennas. They move. So total at this booth, I spent $15 for all these items. Then in another booth, I bought only clocks. I bought five of them. I love the designs. 
And I love decorating with clocks at Halloween. I like thinking about like a witch setting a timer for how long it'll take for her potion to brew. Ooh. I also got these ones. I like this one especially, it has a unique color scheme. And on the tags, it even says if they work or if they don't, which is nice. To be honest, I don't really care if they work. I just like them for their designs and their craftsmanship. There's a guy that's always there at Burley Park. He is always selling vintage bottles and he does sell more expensive ones, but he always has crates full of 50 cent bottles. And I always like to buy them from him for Halloween. I prioritize buying ones that have labels or ones that have color or have writing on them. So like this one has writing on it. This one also has writing on it and is green. And then I love the shape of this bottle. I like to think of these bottles as something that a witch would have, different ingredients for her potions, or a mad scientist. Either way, it is really spooky and perfect for Halloween. I love the Art Deco shape of these ones, and this one is actually iridescent, which makes it extra special. And then you guys might think I'm gross for this, I love the creepy orange liquid in this bottle, and I am not going to empty it out. This bottle has been stopped for, I mean, probably 50 years. And who the heck knows what's in here, but there's no way it's gonna leak. And even if it does, when I pack up my stuff, I put it like in a Ziploc bag, so just in case, it'll still be protected. But I've done this with bottles for years and I've never had a problem. So I think it's really nasty and gross, which makes it much more perfect for Halloween. I paid $6 for all the bottles. So like I said, this flea market is gross and these bottles are not clean. This guy did not bother cleaning them because he only sells them for 50 cents a piece. And I'm cool with that. I would much rather buy dirty bottles for 50 cents a piece and go to some fancy schmancy flea market or antique store where the bottles are already clean or they're brand new and then they're five or ten bucks a piece. So that's why I like Burley Park and a lot of people say that like they don't like that market but I think it's great because you can get stuff like this and if you just put a little bit of work into it then you can get way more antiques for a lot less money. Do you prefer the flea markets that look really nice and have higher prices or do you prefer the really junky dirty ones that have cheaper prices you should definitely let me know in the comments because i'd like to know what type of flea markets you prefer to see from me then i also got this santa and mrs claus salt and pepper set they are made in japan so i wonder if they're collectible i'm not sure i'll have to look them up but either way, I think they're really cute. I paid $3. There was a booth that had a ton of vintage glassware and I loved looking at all of them. They were really collectible and cute. And I got to talking to the owner of the booth and he's a Vietnam veteran. And yeah, we talked for a while and it was nice getting to know him and thanking him for his service. So being at flea markets is nice for that reason that you can get to know the vendors and get to know other people, which is really neat. I ended up buying these Coca-Cola Rudolph Christmas glasses. I have no idea if they're vintage, but I don't care because I think they're kitschy and adorable. So I'm gonna put them in my kitchen for Christmas time. And then I was really excited about this huge eight pack of root beer that I got from him. So I love the typography on it and I love that it's brown because it will be perfect decor for Halloween. I'm not sure if I'm going to decorate with it like this with the carton full or if I'm going to take all the bottles out and decorate with them individually. If you think that one would look better than the other, you should let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think. I know a lot of you don't like to decorate for Halloween. You prefer to decorate for fall. And this is the type of thing that would be perfect for decorating for vintage fall. I wrote a blog post listing a bunch of different vintage items that would be perfect to decorate with for fall. So I will link that below. The two glasses and this, I paid $5. This was only a buck for all of them. Then I bought this package of new old stock Halloween die cuts. They're really tall. They're a lot taller than most of the die cuts I own. So I think that's really neat. I'll probably put them on my living room wall. And it actually came like this. It was sealed new old stock. And I opened it up because I already decorated with one of them. I put these two pumpkins up on my gallery wall. One of them I got at Allegan Antique Market. And then the second one I got here at Burley Park. And I have all the details on my living room gallery wall on my blog, and I will link that below. So I paid $10 for all of these. There's four in the package, so that makes them $2.50 a piece. All right, now on to the last two things that I'm most excited about. I don't know if I'm going to be the only person in the world that loves these, but I'm so excited that I found these Avon It's a Small World bottles. 
I love vintage Disney stuff. So this is something that I've wanted for years. And not only are the little It's a Small World characters adorable, but so are the boxes. So let's unbox one of them. So this one appears to be a Parisian girl. And she even has a little beret and a little collar. How cute is that? She's quite dirty, so she is going to need a bath. But I'm so excited for these. They're adorable. Oh, how cute. There's still liquid in here. I do not plan on opening that up. I got six of them. And honestly, I would have paid $5 a piece for them because I wanted them so bad. But I got them for a buck a piece. So this booth that I found these Avon bottles is the same one where you saw those boxes full of loose Avon bottles. And they also had like broken Christmas ornaments in them. It was super sad. I did look through the loose bottles to see what I could find. I bought this pink elephant. It reminds me of Dumbo. I got this black domino one. I think that'll be cute on some creepy books at Halloween. Then I found this very dirty flower power bell shaped one. This one will need a bath. And the last one I got is this green one. I think it belongs at a witch's abode. So it'll be great for Halloween also. So total for all those Avon bottles, I spent $10. Okay, now onto the thing that I'm most excited about. Well, I bought these at the same booth. These items aren't the most exciting, but I got this Christmas candelabra. I'm excited to decorate with that for Christmas. And then I got these Halloween who's it, what's it's. I don't even know what they are. I'm guessing that they're like little party favors for kids. Happy Halloween! They don't even project. So like, I don't even know if it's a megaphone. If you know what it is, feel free to let me know. Either way, I think they're cute, especially the black cat. But what I'm most excited for is what got me to go in the booth in the first place is I saw the Santa mugs and I spotted one and then I saw four. So I was excited I got a set of four. And this is the booth that I said was the family selling the parents' estate. And they said, my parents love vintage Christmas stuff and I actually have a whole box of them. So they pulled out the whole box and I bought them all. I don't even know how many are in here. Let me count. There's 16 total. I'm really excited to make a giant Santa mug display somehow this Christmas. They sell for quite a bit of money. They sell for like 15 bucks a piece on eBay. So I could always resell them if I want to, or I could give them away as gifts. Vintage Santa mugs are on my list of collectible and valuable Christmas decorations. I wrote a blog post for that, so I will link that below. These are actually from the 90s, but technically vintage, and I was born in the 90s, so it's also weird for me to hear that the 90s are vintage. But some people are really fussy and they're purist about like, you can only own 1960s decor and like, because I'm in a 1960s home, that's how I should decorate with it. But, but who cares? You should decorate however you want and don't ever feel pressured to only decorate in one era or one type of trend. So decorate however you want. Buy things that are vintage. Buy things that are new. Buy things that are in between. Whatever makes you happy and screw the other people. Also, the new old stock die cuts that I bought are from the 90s. But they don't look like they're from the 90s. They look a lot older than that. So I bought them. In total for everything, I spent $109. I'm really happy with what I bought. And who knows, I might decide to end up selling these mugs. But either way, $109, I'm really happy with the stuff that I bought. If you were at the flea market with me, what would you have bought? What was your favorite item that I showed you today? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Bye, friends.